Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently trading up 3.26%, 51,255. Ethereum, 3519, up 3.15%. My goal is to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, and also gain real wealth in the process. Rule 774, master yourself to master the market. Our community is all about real wealth. Mastering yourself to master the market, that's all about what you focus on. Are you solely focused on a return? Or are you also focused on the components of real wealth, such as inner and outer peace, integrity, gratitude, happiness, kindness, authenticity, empathy, and love? Each episode we go through this quote, it's really important. You are worthy and unique. You deserve kindness, love, meaning, and every success in life. Turning to KS own analysis, the four stages that every single investor and trader progresses through to become consistently profitable and attain real wealth. Zone one is the panic zone. This is all about internal panic. Zone two is the blame zone. That's about external panic and conflict with others. Zone three, the patience and rule zone. That's all about probabilistic fearlessness, knowledge, forgiveness, accountability, and learning. Zone four, the meaning zone, is all about inner and outer peace, authenticity, gratitude, worthiness. Every single trader and investor when they start goes through these particular phases. Sometimes people don't get to zone four, even though they can be very, very successful. Some people get lucky and stay in zones one and two, but somehow they just pull it off. Being at the right time in the right place is certainly a good thing. Unfortunately, zones one and two are all about certainty. Certainty in such a volatile market as crypto will just lead to sleepless nights and basically terror. When people transfer from zones one and two into zones three, probability is the ruling focus as well as many rules. You know what to do if it will go up and what to do if it goes down. A focus of zone three and zone four in markets, you cannot hit the bullseye every time. <laughs> so what does this mean? It means that many people, when they enter any particular new market, they expect to win with 100% certainty 100% of the time. Unfortunately, that's just not possible. Rule 170, crypto is volatile. We see really large drawdowns in Bitcoin, which is the least volatile crypto in the crypto space, we can see drawdowns of up to 20% the majority of the time. That compares very unfavorably to the stock market where we see 8 to 11% reductions in price very seldomly and 20% reductions more seldomly than that. The volatility of the crypto industry is literally off the charts. But of course, with great risk, comes great returns. Haha, <laughs> inverse Spider-Man quote. What we're actually seeing is that these large, is in, large increases also dominate the crypto market. Now, what do I mean? You can see from casebitcoin.com, the returns of Bitcoin are mind boggling. They're absolutely astronomical, but they do waver. They go up and down all the time. Cryptos represent an incredible opportunity to own a piece, a slice of the next internet evolution. If you're a long-term holder, you don't really have any worries. You can just buy it and forget about it and come back to it in a couple of years. I'm sure it would have done very well. And you'll also sleep a lot better at night. Don't forget that you always have the option to put a percentage in for investment put a percentage in for trading and a percentage if you want to speculate. In fact, Tales from the Man Cave said that he started being 100% invested as an investor and now he's nearing 50% investor and 50% trader. 
The beauty of it is, according to Dales, when the price goes up, the investor part gets really happy. When the price goes down, the trader part gets very excited. Now Tail said, it doesn't matter what the market wants to do. He's having fun either way. That's his strategy for now. Good on you, Tails. That is exactly what it's about. Just do the strategy that works for you. You are literally in the best market you could possibly be in. Tails is hitting on a really important point. Zone 1 and Zone 2 come with their own behaviours. Basically, when people are in Zone 1, they're dominated by certainty. They have to be 100% certain. You don't get returns like this being 100% certain. The certainty is not really here in the market, but it's not in any market. Also, a lot of people in Zone 1 and 2 they need to be 100% correct 100% of the time and have 0% loss. That means they basically force themselves to think that they can buy at the absolute bottom and sell at the absolute top. That's next to impossible to do. Zone 3 and Zone 4 think slightly differently. They're all about discipline, probabilities, awareness, and they're okay with losses. They have this if-then-else mentality. If price goes up, I'll do this. If it goes down, I'll do this. They're very structured and very disciplined in their approach. They know that they can't pick the lottery numbers for next week's draw. So they're not 100% certain, and they know they're not going to be 100% correct and they don't worry about losses. When I say they don't worry about losses, they don't worry about the fact that they're going to take losses. They just contextualize them. Losses are the tuition fee of the market. And they just say, okay, I wanna pay the minimum tuition fee I can, absolutely. It's possible a lot of people skip around videos and I certainly understand that. Unfortunately, I put very important things all throughout the video. About five days ago, I mentioned that I was getting in at 1514 in episode 272. I was starting to buy Solana because it was getting above this resistance. This is before, this is Bitcoin. This is before Bitcoin was actually breaking out. The potential thing that caused the breakout may have been some false news coming out about Ripple winning its case against the Securities Exchange Commission, which would be fantastic for the whole of crypto, unbelievably so. That probably liquidated the very high number of shorts that was there, causing that big blow off and potentially the momentum kept it going. We're actually experiencing incredibly low volumes in the market at the moment. I'd like to share this with you because I think it could help. Consistent profitability requires patience and buying when resistance becomes support. As a trader, that's what I look for, confirmation and seeking that things actually behave as they should. If they don't, we just make adjustments. You can use the volatility of crypto to your advantage with a 10-5-10 fund. What I've done here, this is from a video I shared with the coffee club in appreciation for them buying me a coffee. You can see here that price came up and then it retraced. It took about six days. Then price came up, retraced. It took about 19 days. There's a very full analysis on the 10-5-10 rule. At this link here, buymeacoffee.com slash crypto trading KS. All you do is go to the post page and click that video. You'll note this is the actual third video of the coffee club. I have the links in for the previous two videos as well. You can think back to here. It took a certain amount of time for that load to be matched again. And a lot of people thought they missed out. Price is always moving in a wave. One thing that I do suggest don't make the 10-5-10 fund 100% of what you put into the market. We never go all in or all out. We just really wanted to look at graduating in and graduating out. 
doing different kinds of percentages. For example, you may have a percentage to invest, percentage to trade, percentage to speculate, and a percentage in the 10-5-10 fund. Turning to Bitcoin and Ethereum market capitalization, we can see we're about 3.66% away from major structural repair. The thing to note here is this is a very strong level of resistance. We can see that when things come up to resistance, it's kind of like a wall. It tends to reflect and reject price backwards. And in crypto, we have to be prepared for anything, but it's really important to understand the role that resistance plays. The Fed chair is preparing to launch a review of a possible central bank digital currency. We also have the issues coming up in around 13 days of the US government running out of money. Also, there's been a few developments in the Evergrande situation. There's been a couple more property developers over there that have missed their bond repayments, their debt repayments. Let's have a look at Bitcoin's fundamentals or technicals. We can see that Bitcoin's price is currently $51,062. It came up to this uh, resistance line at 52064 and has been rejected. It's probably seeking to make this once resistance a support line. We can see that the rally in Bitcoin has been very, very substantial. It wouldn't be at all unreasonable for it to come back and retest and resume. The critical line that we're looking at is this 52,658. As a trader, when I look at this chart, I have a strategy if it goes up and if it goes down. I look at both strategies. I don't say it must work out. It does whatever it does, and that's okay. I don't worry about certainty. I just think about probability. The probability is reasonably high that it can continue going up. However, we have to keep mindful that things are brewing on the global stage, and we need to be mindful of that. So a strategy would be, okay, well, if it doesn't go right, where am I going to exit? Now, of course, if you're a long-term investor, you know the percentages that Bitcoin does, and there's no reason to imagine that that won't continue. You can just write it out and you can just say, oh, I don't care if it goes up and down, I'll just buy some more. When the price starts to consolidate around whatever it does. That's why we have to look every day at cryptos. We can see the price is always moving in a wave. It's coming up and then down, up and down, up and down. That's just what it does. Sometimes the waves are very harsh and they crash like a tsunami. Other times they're pretty gentle. Thank you, Flamingo, for that reference. The concept is that we've had a very decent size up. Another key thing to understand as a trader, well, traders in general, they don't care about the price in something. They care about the percentage move on the target and they care about is something above resistance or not? Has it come back, retested, resumed off? All of those things. So we can see that there's really strong support at the $50,000 mark and also potentially at that 50389 mark and the 49 691 mark. We just have to keep our eye on what is happening. Just have a strategy either way. That's just really good practice in life anyway. Looking at the Bitcoin stablecoin supply ratio, SSR oscillator, money is flowing into stablecoins and flowing into Bitcoin. This is a really good sign for positive price momentum. We can also see the futures open interest across all exchanges is increasing. Across the past 24 hours, there's been about 164 million in liquidations occurring across 55,010 trading positions. For the past 12 hours, nearly 70% of liquidations have been short. Short liquidations push the price up. You might notice down here that we have very, very low volume. We're also keeping our eye on the stable coins. We see the circulating supply of USDT, Tether, 
decreasing and the circulating supply of USDC, which is circle, increasing. We see a bit of wobbling around with BUSD, but it's pretty much decreasing at the moment. DAI wobbling around a bit on the down, but we can see USDC is gaining. We talked a lot about USDC in previous episodes. Smart money would pull itself from USDT to USDC. Now, when I say pull itself, you've got to understand what I mean. USDT, say you've got, for example, $1,000 in USDT. Actually, not that you bought $1,000 of ETH with USDT. You'll have then $1,000 worth of ETH. If you have $1,000 in cash that's represented by USDT, what I did previously is I transferred the holdings that I had in cash from USDT to USDC. And you can see many others are doing that at the moment. The really important thing to note, if you buy, for example, Bitcoin, just use Bitcoin as an example. If you buy $1,000 of Bitcoin with USDC, when you've made the purchase, you have Bitcoin. It's got nothing to do with USDC anymore. You could take that Bitcoin and convert it to USDT or BUSD or ETH or anything else that Bitcoin is paired with. And that's a lot of things. That's why when we talk about USDT, we're talking about the cash, like the actual amount of money that you have in USDT, if anything. Looking at Ethereum's technicals, Ethereum currently trading at 3490. We can see Ethereum got above this strong level of once resistance and turned it, confirmed it into support. That level was 3319. It's doing quite well. It's coming up against overhead resistance at 3590 and also at 3649. It's not surprising that it's bouncing off that prematurely. That's what resistance does. There's a lot of sell activity up there. Part of level three and level four trading and investing is to be aware of the risks, but don't be freaked out by them and also have a strategy in play for when things go right and when they go wrong. Ethereum has quite good support around the 3130 mark, as well as 2796, 2609. Rule 109, enhance pattern recognition. This is a real core of what we do as a community. A little hidden gem, the reason I look through the tops, because the tops, the top cryptos, they actually represent the bulk of value in the crypto market. If we understand what they're doing, we can understand how their pressure and gravity combined will play out on different alts. Now, what have we got here? This is a daily basis. I want you to just look at these particular charts. They go back to about, say, the 9th of December 2020. What we're doing here is on a daily basis. You can see the D is highlighted in blue. We're looking at Bitcoin. What does this show us? What is the trend? Is it going up or is it coming down? What is the overall trend here? Have a look at Ethereum. What's Ethereum's trend? We generally look at a tighter time frame, but it's very important to zoom out as well. Ethereum, of course, is going up. What about Binance Coin? Binance Coin is going up. What about has it cut through resistance from this peak around May? Has it done that yet? What about ADA, Cardano? What is Cardano doing? It's going up. Has it covered this resistance? Yes, it's consolidating at literally the price it is at right now. What about XRP? XRP, is it going up or is it going down? What's the trend, the basic trend? It's going up. What about Sol? It's going up. <laughs> Sol has a lot of Sol. It's doing really well. What about Dogecoin? It is going up and consolidating. We try to look for similar patterns. You take this area of Doge, take this area of Binance Coin, 
kind of similar, but Binance Coin has a little bit more power. Just interesting to look at. Dot, is it coming up or going down? What's the overall trend? If you were to try to figure out the direction, has it passed across top level resistance yet? No, it hasn't. Has it passed across that resistance? Not yet. What about Sol? Has it passed across previous resistance? And you can, the reason that I put eight charts together is so you can literally look, for example, at Sol right now, just where we are here. You see that that is a level of resistance, tight resistance, across Sol's price around the 9th of May, or on the 9th of May. And then you can look to what Bitcoin did and what ADA did and what happened next. We can see that Sol took off around the 16th of August. It's really, really fascinating and very powerful to look at crypto charts like this. So why are we looking at the one day time frame? You can see the one day time frame up here in the particular coin. What about understanding where a level of support or resistance could be? There could be a level of resistance here and here for Binance coin. What about support? What is price honoring? It's around here and around here. So that's given you four particular points to work with. And you can do exactly the same thing. For example, Cardano around here and here. And then if we're talking about what would be reasonable high levels of resistance and support, let's have a look at XRP. We've got a lot of resistance playing through there. A lot of resistance playing through there. We look here, that would be about right. And we're just keeping it tight. So on Sol, I'll go and read these out in a minute. We have a level of resistance here because price came up, came back and then passed through it. We've got a level of resistance around there. We have a level of support approximately there. And this resistance can act as support. Once resistance, once turned it into support when it passes. Another level there. What about Doge? At the peak would be reasonable. We have a peak here, but we just don't use that tip because we're looking across and to see confluence on the bottoms. Perhaps potentially around this mark would be good. We're looking in here. This bottoming pattern has shown a level of support and we've got a lighter one here. Note there's not much for Doge in terms of support here. We probably come back to there at the best case scenario. Now, let's have a look at Dot. Dot is playing. Now, what I'm trying to do is to create reasonably tight levels of structure. You can do tight and loose. And of course, you can put these lines anywhere that you want. You just be consistent with your analysis. I believe these lines would be a reasonable take. So what we're seeing with Binance coin, Binance coin is 439, $422.30 for support and 327.20 for support. Resistance at 550 cents, more likely to be 500 because psychology would dictate many people selling it when it reaches 500. Also above 646, Cardano currently trading at two, 215 strong level of support at 1626 1259 resistance 2 238 and 2971 looking at XRP current price 10690 support 09907 and 8396 going above looking at resistance 12537 and 15272. Sol currently trading at 16287. Resistance above approximately 18590. 
support below 129.89 and 80.53. We could also do one at 50.27. This could be a good one for a 10.510 fund because if we get any shocks in the market, we may see Sol take down, do a long tail rejection. I think the really important part to know, we are in the bull market until proven otherwise. We need to have a relatively optimistic outlook on things, even though there's so much terror in the world. Let's have a look at Doge. Doge trading at 2509 resistance, 3081 and 6702 support, 2040, 1769 and a long, long tail rejection could possibly reach 775. Having a look at DOT, currently trading a 3108 support, 3005 and 2728 resistance above, 3852 and 4515. I've done it this way because quite a few community members reached out and said, Ken, can you please do this? <laughs> so of course I'll do it. I'll do whatever you need me to do. I'm here to help. Let's cover the next top cryptos. I put Bitcoin and Ethereum in here for you. Now what I've done, Bitcoin and Ethereum are sort of comparative points so that you can always see how Bitcoin and Ethereum are playing out compared to the top cryptos. Now, when we look at Luna, what is the basic trend? Is it going up or is it going down? Has it cleared resistance? The resistance is here. Yes, it's cleared resistance. This is a very good way to determine trends. What about Uni? What's happening with Uni? Uni, what's its direction? It's going up. What's its strength? It's different, isn't it? So, for example, level of resistance above, another level of resistance, price, and support levels. What about AVAX? What is AVAX up to? AVAX is in an uptrend. Chainlink, in an uptrend. What about Litecoin? In an uptrend. But they have different gradients, different angles, don't they? Bitcoin Cash in an uptrend, but different angles. You can see how price can go up and down. A lot of people, when they saw Bitcoin Cash taking off, they think, wow, it's going to the moon. It's never going to be cheaper. Go all in and more. Sell your house, whatever it is. And then what happened? Crash down. And a lot of people would exit on that crash. Then, for example, it takes off again. What we look at is to try to understand where resistance and support levels are broken. One thing we do in trading is we always zoom out to get an overall view of the trend and then put in major structural areas. We want to know where the structure has been obeyed previously so we can start to think about timing scaling in, scaling out, writing things. Then we really are interested in how past patterns have played out, the volatility inherent. You can see with Luna, it has different volatility than for example, Chainlink, but Bitcoin Cash, Chainlink and Litecoin have similar volatilities. This is a very important thing to pick up. By doing this kind of analysis, we can actually zoom in and figure out potential places to buy. Let's just have a quick look at the stock markets and Bitcoin. We can see indeed Bitcoin is on a bit of a tear and we know it's light volume. The Nasdaq is coming down, Dow, S&P coming down. We've got a little bit of a stabilization here. Maybe they're going to turn around. Let's look a little bit more closely. This is the NASDAQ futures. So we can see in the live futures, we're getting resisted, uh, getting re <laughs> repelled from this resistance line. If the markets were going to repair significantly, we would expect price to open above that line. That's why I like to do really tight lines that cut through a lot of stuff. 
I don't do my lines like a lot of other people because after being in the markets for over 30 years, you just do what works. Volatility, we can see the volatility was increasing, now starting to subside, but actually still quite high. The dollar is starting to increase. That is an interesting thing. It's good to look back and to understand what brought with it. For example, if you look at the NASDAQ and look at the dollar, the dollar was going up through this period. What did the NASDAQ do? It came down. What did Bitcoin do? It consolidated, but it came down as well. What did volatility do? It went up. Looking across to the other one, this is the bond price bond yields, gold and oil like crude. When the dollar was going up, what happened to, for example, bond prices? Bond prices were coming down. What about bond yields? Of course, they're inverse. They were going up. Okay, what happened to gold futures? This chart. When the dollar went up, what did it do? It went down. What about crude oil when the dollar went up it kind of went up a little bit but it was a bit undecided here so what we can tell if the dollar is coming up the futures are pointing down how does this play out on bitcoin what is the impact of bitcoin we can see the dollar going up bitcoin just retracing we're not saying that the dollar causes this that's really important to understand you notice how it jumps. For example, I can't get this bar or this bar because why is that? Bitcoin trades 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Traditional markets are only open a fraction of that time, 20% of that time. It's really easy to become overwhelmed when you get into markets and I really feel for you maybe the way of going just focus on the chart in front of you just look at the chart and say well this is looking pretty strong it's getting over resistance here it's done that maybe coming back to test this is a support um, i'll get in because it's looking good but i know price moves with a negative bias those so there is always a probability that it will retrace price moves in waves has a negative bias okay so it should come down maybe a little bit more who knows you can just trade the probabilities it's always good to keep your ear to the ground to understand macroeconomic factors but when a lot of people are quite new to the market they those macro factors can scare people to death so it's just really important to have an overall strategy if you're an investor that's a really really good way to go you could be X percent or A, B or C percent. You could be an investor, 80 percent, and you could be a trader, 10 percent, for example, and a speculator, 10 percent. It's whatever you want, what percentage works for, for you. Just a quick return to the 10-5-10 volatility fund. The 10-5-10 fund is all about the ultimate dollar cost averaging strategy. Many people think that they miss out on opportunities. When you understand the logic behind the 10-5-10 fund, you'll see things in an incredibly different way. That's why I said, when you actually understand the 10-5-10 rule, you really can't unsee what you've seen. That video is available here on buymeacoffee.com slash crypto trading KS. I just like to thank everybody who's extended their kindness and appreciation to me by buying me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. It's really nice of you. Our community is all about real wealth. You are worthy and unique. You deserve kindness, love, meaning, and every success in life. That's a beautiful thing to take with you every day. It's so true. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. Thank you to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. Please say hi and let me know where you're viewing from and if you have any questions. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. 
Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, take care, and see you next time. Bye for now.